Hi, my name is Margaret McCartney. I'm a general practitioner in Glasgow and I'm very pleased to be able to tell you why it is I'm concerned about conflicts of interest in medicine and bias more generally. I'm a GP and my job is really to try and help people make the best possible quality decisions that they can do and for that I need to have really good quality information. So where do you get that information from? You know, you can get information from thousands of different places online, you know, um, medical journals, textbooks, um, people telling you, their neighbours telling you what they did or someone in the streets um, telling you what works for them or not. And we all know that we're going to try and get the best quality, most reliable information. And the problem with that is that it can be difficult to know what is the most reliable and what is not. So one of the ways that I use to try and work out what the information worth reading about and worth using is, is to try and ascertain what level of bias there might be in that information. And we know that there is a lot of problems with bias in the medical literature, particularly when literature has been generated by people who've got some kind of conflict of interest. And of course, we probably know most of all about financial conflicts of interest, and they are really important. So we know that if a drug company and pharmaceutical company publishes a study, it's more likely to be in favour of that product compared with a study that was done by an independent fund that didn't come from any particular point of view. We know, for example, that negative trials, trials that show that something didn't work, are more likely not to be published, which means that you won't get hold of them unless you go and specifically look for them. And we know that this problem happens a lot in some drug companies. Not all, some have made a commitment to try and improve things, but many haven't, unfortunately, which means you have to be really careful to know, have I got all the relevant information about this that I need to have? We know that when doctors get education from drug companies, from formula milk companies, the information that they get tends to be more biased in favour of the products than not. We know that prescribing patterns of doctors who've been exposed to this kind of education tend to be less high quality and more expensive prescriptions afterwards. And again, that's a really big cause of concern because if you're working somewhere like the NHS, every pound spent on one thing can't be spent on another thing. So we've got a duty to make sure that the money that we end up spending through prescribing or recommending things is going to do the best possible good for the most possible people. People. So that's the reasons why I'm concerned about bias and conflicts of interest. I recommend that everyone in healthcare is as transparent as possible about their potential for conflicts within their within their financial situation or whatever it is. If, if you're working as a consultant to a drug company, then I think that people who are reading what you're writing about that drug should know about it. So myself and some colleagues a few years ago set up a website called Who Pays This Doctor? And we encourage all medical professionals to sign up with their open and transparent declaration of interest on there. We hope that one day that will be taken over by a regulator. It's not going to solve even most of the problems with conflict management because conflicts still have to be managed. But sometimes there's a disagreement about when a declaration is a conflict and when it isn't. And that might be time and place specific as well. But I think all we can do in the meantime is be as transparent and open as we can be. Certainly the General Medical Council in the UK makes it very clear that doctors must be open and transparent. But the problem is there isn't really a very good way of doing that just now. So I hope you might want to think about or consider those issues and thanks to Health Action International for doing so much work in this area.